let's try to see how we can decompose the outer sample error rate into the bias and variance. The first thing we'll do is we'll introduce a little bit of notation. By G superscript D will denote the final hypothesis we learned using the data set D. So before we just had H denote a hypothesis and we defined the in-sample error rates of these hypotheses. Now we want to make it clear that G is the final hypothesis and we arrived at G by using the data set D. So what we'll consider is now the outer sample error rate of G sub superscript D and then we'll want to try to rid the dependencies of an, on a specific data set D. So over here we actually kind of wanted to do kind of a similar thing. We had the in sample error rate and the outer sample error rate and in the outer sample error rate we wanted to rid the dependency on a specific data set. We did this by taking expectations with regards to x. So what we'll do here is we'll take expectation with regards to all data sets D. So we'll now want to try to manipulate this and write this into something that is the sum of the bias and the variance. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the definition of the outer sample error rate and we'll plug this definition in. This is defined over here. So we'll have that the, we'll have the expectation with regards to D and then uh, this will be the expectation with regards to X and then it'll be G superscript D of X minus the unknown target function with respect to X and then this thing will be squared. So if you remember the definitions of expectations, you remember for continuous functions, this will be integrals. If they were discrete, it would have been sums. In this case, we're allowed to change the order of the integrals. So this also allows us to change the order of these expectations. So if this is a bit confusing, you might want to look the, the definitions of expectation up on Wikipedia. So we can change the order of these two guys. And then we'll uh, try to multiply these out. now. So then, then this will be, let's just close these guys. So this will be G superscript D X squared minus 2G D of X F of X plus F of X squared. So the rule I'm using here is, is the high school rule. You'll probably remember A minus B squared is A squared B squared minus 2AD. So this is just the rule I used here. So now what I want to do is I'll, I'll want to try to be a bit more specific. Some of these terms don't really depend on the expectation here. So I'll try to uh, only apply the expectation where need where, where, where it's really needed. So, so this is kind of a constant with respect to this expectation. So I'll just move this over here. So then I'll have the expectation with regards to X and then I'll have the expectation with regards to D of GD of X squared and then I'll end the expectation. Then that two and f of x are constant, so I can move these outside. Then I'll have the expectation with regards to d of g d of x. Then I'll close the expectation, and then f of x will be outside now. So I could split these two guys up by linearity of, of expectation also. And then the 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 other thing is, is is true because these things are constants with regards to this expectation. And then I'll have f of x squared in the end here. Great. So now I'll let g bar of x be defined to be expectation with regards to d of g d of x. So you can think of this as kind of an average function. So I mean we kind of we have a function a final function we learned and we kind of read the dependency of a specific data set. So it's kind of like an average function or an expected function you might say. You can think of it as, as if we had a lot of data sets, D1 to DK. And then for each of these data sets, we learned a hypothesis, D, G, D1, all the way up to G, DK. And then we had G bar of X will kind of be, it'll be approximated by like the average of all these guys. Right? We have the average sum of IS1 decay of GI of, of X. Right? Or actually, this would be just to be consistent with notation here g of d i x okay so now i'll this is this is purely notation actually it's just i'm just going to rename this guy g bar so this is the only thing i did now and i tried to 
give you some intuition into what is this function. So now let's let's try to look at, uh, at rewriting this into something different. So so I'll now write this as the same. So expectation with regards to d of g superscript d of x squared, and then I have the same thing as before minus two g bar of x f of x, and then f of x squared. So now I'm going to add something and I'm going to subtract the same thing. So I'm going to subtract g bar of x and then I'm going to add g bar of x. So this is this is just doing nothing. I'm just adding and subtracting the same thing. And then I'll just square both of them. It, it'll still be, still be, the equality will still hold uh, here. So now what I want you to notice is that this thing will be, um, this will be equal to g bar of x minus f of x squared. So this will kind of be, well, what is this? Let's just think about that. Well, this is the the average function minus the the target. So it's the deviation of the average function or kind of the expected function and the target function, right? So it's, it's like, it's how much we expect to deviate from the target. This is this is the bias. So it's the intuition I gave you over here is kind of kind of holds uh, with with what we get over here. So well, then we would expect this guy to be the variance because I promised you that we could decompose this guy into the bias and the variance. So we want this to be the variance. So I'll start by claiming that this thing is the same as uh, expectation with regards to d of g d of x minus g bar of x squared. So this might not uh, look like something that's actually okay when you look at it initially. So I'll just, I'll just, I think the easiest way to see why these these are equal is actually to just multiply this out. So I'll just, I'll just do this for you so so you'll be convinced that this is true, and then we'll try to argue why this is the variance. So if I multiply this out, I'll get g d of x squared minus two g d two g d of x g bar of x. Uh, and then I'll have uh, plus g bar of x squared, and everything will be with expectation with regards to d. So now what I could do is, I could I could split this expectation up, right? So by linearity of expectation, I could have expectation here, and then I could have expectation also of this guy. So it might be a bit ugly now, so I'm just splitting the expectation up. The only thing that kind of have expectation with regards to D now is, is this guy and this guy. So I'll split it up. These guys already have expectation with regards to D. These are kind of like constants with regards to this guy. So I'm, I'm just moving the expectations out. But then then this guy now is exactly what we define G bar to be. This is the expectation of D with, uh, and then G superscript D of X. So, so this thing here is exactly g bar of x. So then I have g bar of x times g bar of x, this is g bar of x squared, and then I have minus two of them, plus one. So then this plus one will eat this guy, and I'll have this thing, which is what I had over here, minus uh, this thing. So they'll be exactly the same. So I just wanted to write this out for you to see. Um, so now what is this thing? What does this thing say? So it's, it's, uh, so it's, it, this is kind of like, this is the, the mean or the average function, right? So it's how much I expect to deviate from the mean. This is basically what this says, right? It's this this guy, it's like, I, I, this is what I, I take expectation with regards to the data set, and then I learn some guy. So it's, the, it's under the expectation of a data set, then how much do I expect to deviate from the mean? And this is exactly what we had over here. It's like how much to expect to deviate from the mean, where the expectation is with regards to data set. So this is the this is the variance. Okay. So it, this might not have been that formal, but I just wanted to kind of give you the ideas of the proof, and then maybe you could try to go through it sometimes and uh, question everything along and try to convince yourself that this is indeed correct.